Now you see in Dante, the way it works is that Dante's hell is organized by a hierarchy of misdirected love, of loving the wrong thing. Now Dante assumes, like Aristotle before him, that we are always moving towards something we love. Aristotle, even in his physics, would say that if I take something and I drop it, the reason it falls, the reason that the leaf goes towards the ground is because the leaf loves the ground. We are always moving towards an object of desire, of love. And so hell is organized by having loved the wrong thing and having moved towards the wrong thing. But the vestibule of hell is not yet inside of hell. It is for the people who never loved. It is for the people who never moved, who never left their homes, their comfort zones, who remained inert, who never defined themselves. And so let's examine the symbolism of this place. It is surrounded on one side by a river and on the other side by the gate to hell. Now, the Romans, uh, in their wisdom <laughs> or in their extravagance, had three separate gods or deities for doorways alone. One was, I think, for the hinges, another one for the door frame, and another one was the abstract idea of a boundary. And this, this is what is called liminality. A, li a liminal phase or point is when you cross from one point to another. And I mean, this is seen in our everyday life. This is not some abstract or removed concept. If you walk into your home, you're going to act differently. There's a boundary there, which once you've crossed, you take on a new and different identity. When you go home to your parents' house, that's a different identity again. When you walk into a church, when you walk into a workplace, all these are surrounded by boundaries, almost magical in a sense. You walk through and you re-emerge a different person. This is because in these places you are defined by different relations. New mannerisms must be taken up, a new set of decorum, what is acceptable, what isn't acceptable. The Nyavi, the apathetic, who inhabit the vestibule of hell, have not crossed the river. They haven't gone through a gate. They remain inert. They never move. They never define themselves. And they remain unnamed. The message of love as the mover, of taking something and just loving it, can re be really inspiring. But what if you get it wrong? What if you make a mistake again? What if you fail miserably? The story of the prodigal son tells us is that we must simply move towards that which we love. For the prodigal son, that was a decadent lifestyle, a lifestyle defined by passion and an abundance, overabundance. This was obviously wrong, but when the, second, when the prodigal son returns home, he returns home a defined man. What we must realize here is that anything is better than staying inert. Choose anything, anything that moves you. Go towards it, give it a try. Commit yourself to it. Be defined through action.